We expect to be shot as you are leaving that store. I don't think shooting shoplifters is the right response. I don't think guns are the right response, but there does need to be a response. We're dealing with a systematic breakdown of fear and respect of authority at the very same time as a failing economy means desperate people are more willing to, ri to risk more. The result is chaos, fear and tragedy. It's got to stop. So the question is how? Well, joining me now is my pack, Talk TV contributor Esther Cracker, the socialist author Grace Blakely, political journalist Ava Santina, and for the US perspective, the former wrestler and Fox News star Tyrus. Well, welcome to all of you. Tyrus, let me start with you. What is causing all this? In America, sure. young people invading stores with total impunity because they know there's no real consequence. Uh, here we have an endemic now of knife crime, young kids stabbing each other. America has obviously ongoing huge gun violence problems. The, the common theme in all of them is there is a, in, in my opinion, a smaller and smaller estimation by the people carrying out all this stuff that there will be any real accountability for it. Well, and you're brilliant as always, but I, here's the thing. We got two things in common. We have knives in England and we have guns in America, two very different violent weapons. But what we have in common is we have awful people. We have horrible parenting. Grandparents are afraid of their grandchildren. A complete breakdown of, of our consequences for our children, which starts at home. We've got the bulldozer parents in, in America where if a kid does something at school, they want the teacher fired, not the child uh, punished. So, and you can see that when they're growing up and now you have no consequences. Uh, when they are arrested, they're released in America. If you steal, I think it's like 500 to $900 American, uh, it's not considered a crime anymore. So that's the, the, the biggest problem is that we have to start realizing it's not the weapons and the utilities they use. If we took knives away in England, they'd probably use trucks and cars or bats. It's horrible people. We have awful people in, in, in this first world uh, that we, and the, they have so many things they can do. They don't have to work hard for anything, and there's no consequences. These are first world problems coming back to bite us uh, in countries that are successful because in, in third world countries and things like that, when you steal, when you do horrible things, there are real consequences. You steal a lot, you lose a hand in some cases. So uh, just the idea of that will refrain people. But right now our kids uh, across the sea in America basically feel they can do whatever they want, and there's no parenting. It's horrible. I pretty much argued this. I argued this in my last video. The problem really does start at home. And I talked about this. I always talk about this. I very much believe the breakdown of the, of the nuclear family plays a part. We need to bring the fathers back into the household and we need to mend the nuclear family structure. That's, that's the best thing to do. That's the best thing to do. Horrible parents across the sea in America basically feel they can do whatever they want and there's no parenting. It's horrible parenting. Right. All right, Grace, I can see a lot of facial expressions going on there. There have always been horrible people. You know, it's very easy to look at the situation and say, oh, it's just because we've suddenly been giving birth to loads more horrible people. That obviously isn't the case. If we look at this, you know, just objectively, if we look at the facts, if we look at the statistics, the studies on what causes violent crime, the single biggest predictor across the board of levels of violent crime across time and space is inequality. Why? It's not just because people are poorer and they want, you know, to access more stuff. That is a problem. It's because in a society that denies particularly young men access to advancement, then violent crime becomes something of a status symbol. This is borne out across sociological studies across time and space. It becomes, you know, um, there's an incentive to kind of steal, uh, kill someone than to steal their trainers because the it becomes is, a status I, symbol. I, I, because we haven't got those routes for advancement for young men. Because, I mean, Tyrus touched on a point in saying that in third world countries, you don't necessarily have this problem because there are actual social consequences, which I think is an important point you touched on. When I was a kid growing up in Ghana, if you stole something in our neighborhood, it doesn't matter who, who finds out, whether it's your neighbor or someone else, once your, your family gets to know, there will be consequences. Yeah. Sometimes your neighbor might discipline you. The issue here is a breakdown of legal and social consequences, and that's what we're missing. I there agree, has actually. Be, there, has, there has to be ostracization and actual social consequences for stealing, but there also has to be legal penalties, real ones that I agree. are actually terrifying. I, agree. I mean, I've got to say, I've come round. I mean, Tara's <clears throat> talked about third world countries. You look at someone like Singapore or Hong Kong, I've, I've walked the streets of these places at midnight, right? You just don't get this kind of stuff yeah. there because the penalties, if you do are severe. And I keep being told by the wishy-washy brigade, Ava, look, you know, you, you, you can't be too tough on these kids. You've got to be... Actually, why? Why don't we just say, right, the next time a young kid is caught with a knife on the street, they get 10 years in prison.
I can tell you, it would soon stop. Well, and it, it may would. sound like I'm, I've, I've morphed criminals. into a right-wing headbanger. I can assure you most people in this country would share that sentiment. So why aren't we doing tougher things like that? Well, I don't know. The extreme of your argument is we turn into Saudi Arabia and then we just throw away anyone who might, you know, look like they're committing a crime or then we execute them. Which I'm not saying that. I'm talking about know. people Sorry, carrying a knife with intent to use it, argument. not for cutting up their your, cheddar cheese. And your point there about 10 years, well, we've got a prison system at the moment that doesn't work. It doesn't rehabilitate people. And at the moment, we are turfing people out. Sorry, we're throwing them into prison and they're coming out the other side and we are, mm. they're, they're not rehabilitating. They're going back to commit more crimes. So how are you going to stop, stop, how are you gonna stop the well, kids stabbing each other? I think it goes back to a Races. I think it's a social issue. I think that we've got to really tackle inequality. You know, we've got to look at this long term rather than thinking, what's the short term solution? Throw everyone, like, you know, lock everyone up and throw away the key. Well, I mean, it's hang on, hang on. Okay, hang, hang on. I'll come to us. Before we look, inequality seems to me, with great respect, one of those vacuous generic terms, like a sort of catch all excuse Piss. for what is going on here. I know. I don't come from a rich household. My parents were working class. But honestly, I didn't get up to a lot of crime. Why? Because I had very strict parents. I had bloody African parents, guys. You know, if you're out there, you know that African parents are very, very strict. So I couldn't be getting up to criminality. And I was poor myself. The argument that she's making, the fact that there's there's inequality, economic inequality and stuff like that, guys, I'm, I'm not... I'm not sure I fully agree with her. I, I was raised in bloody Peckham, South East London, guys. I didn't literally turn to criminality. It's a terrible excuse. It's a terrible excuse. I know lots of kids who come from poor backgrounds who do not go around stabbing people because their parents, and this can apply, by the way, to, to uh, lower class people, to middle class people, to so-called upper class people. I went to a fee-paying school till I was 13, then state uh, comprehensive school. I've seen all manner of people, right, and parents. The common theme of kids that behaved well, or at least felt shame and accountability if they were caught doing bad things, was strong parenting, yes. right? Teachers, yes, and authority, yes, but actually strong parenting. I've just explained to you the... But that's the, not about equality. No, it, it is. It's about it's the, the mechanism through which equality affect, inequality affects violent crime. You know, you it's can not say, about equality. You can say, for example, you know, um, not everyone, not every kid who's been in institutional care is going to end up on the streets. But we know, statistically speaking, that children who've been in institutional care so are, are much you, more are likely are to end up strong, on the streets. Are you promoting strong families? To what I'm families? saying is there is a clear and causal link between the things that happen to you as a child that accounts because, for because, things because that's, like that's, whether or not you're in a strong community, whether or not you're in a strong family, but also I would say, I, okay, okay, but I would say, what happens to you I would when you're say adult. things like successive governments, Labour and Conservatives, selling off playing fields. Absolutely. By the dozen, Absolutely. right? Cutting back on sport, cutting back... I did a documentary on hoodies, right? Kids that wear hoodies and, and commit uh, a lot of crime. And a lot of these kids, when I interviewed them, said, well, there are no, like, youth clubs anymore, right? They just shut them all down. Totally. So there's nothing else to do. They're yeah, getting bored. No, but it's, but also, think, it's think... also the internet, isn't it? Like, I don't want to sound like some sort of, like, draconian figure, but, you know, it is the rise of social media. And if you are in an algorithm and you're on TikTok or Instagram that is promoting violence to you, you're, you, you do sit in an echo chamber. Oh, let me bring in Taurus, because you've been listening to this, Taurus. So I think you want to add some more on this. Hey, let me just say that. Let me say this again. She has absolutely no idea what she's talking about with all due respect. Which one? Because it it's could be one of the I think you're talking about me. you got to narrow it down here. The feeling's mutual. <laughs> it's the community. That's what has broken down. They're spoiled. Everyone spends all their time on social media and Facebooks, and they say, oh, it's in quality. I grew up in Lynn, Massachusetts, ghetto slum USA, but you know what? We had strong families and parents, and we were poor, but we didn't act poor. We worked hard, we paid our dues, and we got things together. Now, everyone makes excuses. If your kid's bad, he, he's not a bad child, you're not a bad parent, he has something wrong with him that you can't correct. So it has nothing to do with inequality. That's just a good answer from first world virtue signaling elites to say, because you can't fix that. Everyone well, I'm going to say, probably, a load of work. Probably long, I'm going to say, Taurus, probably long overdue that Grace Blakey was called... Every woman on that band had some form of inequality. Right. It's ridiculous. I, it's, I agree with you. It's and, and it's, and it's, it's, it's height... People. Being it's raised by lazy people. I agree. It's high time Grace Blakely was called a first world elite as well. <laughs> it's like I've been waiting for that taunt. Uh, look, I got, I've it's got to just, say, sorry, I agree with Tyrus. It's so easy. No, simply to saying it's inequality. And say, it's so much easier to so how do you say, explain, lock them up, throw away the queen. Well, look how I, tough I, I, I am. How do you my explain, society. Grace, cut how, off your hand if you I can give it to me. How do you explain? I can change it. It's not a show How do you explain, if it's all about inequality, that so many people 
who have very little in life in this country do not commit these crimes. Because it is about a whole set of factors that determine, you know, the, the way in which you were raised and then the kind of okay, characteristics I, you have when you grow up. Look, again, let it's me, the same let thing. Let it's let what me, I just let said. Me, let me we give you know an example. that children who grow up in institutional care are much more likely to then go out onto the streets, end up on the streets, end up homeless, end up taking drugs, end up mm. interacting with the criminal justice system. That isn't to say that every kid who has a, you know, who is in, in institutional care is going to end up but that way. Is, but we know that right, if you don't Esther, experience the, the love, point, community support, that is a big The biggest point here is culture, because I can I can paint two different pictures here. If we look at the black community in the UK, you actually look at the the sort of uh, cri um, the rates of criminality amongst Black African children um, um, compared to Black Caribbean children, and there's a huge disparity. And one of the biggest reasons is because of culture, because some kids uh, kids in one particular group grow up uh, with church growing church going families yeah. with strong values. You know, if you go and she's walking a very <laughs> she's walking a very scary line here, a very fire line here. Uh, I'm sure she's gonna piss off a lot of people. She's going to, but what I will say that, of course, like I said, I, I grew up with African parents, very strict, always telling you, read you, you must read your books, you must read, read your books, always pushing education and schooling and all of that stuff. So I do agree with Esther. Look, culture does play a part. African culture does play a part. Carry on up with church going, church going families yeah. with strong values. You know, if you go and carry a knife around and your Nigerian mother mm -hmm. finds you, you will probably get slapped across the face. And you have other, the, um, the other side of the um, the spectrum that don't actually have that. And you can see huge disparities there. So it actually comes down to culture. I don't disagree with you, but the question is, how do we then build supportive you have cultures to change, you for have, you young have, people you to have, exist You have to actually build investing communities. in communities. And you know what? I disagree with Esther. She's trying to make this argument that African kids are one thing and Caribbean kids are another thing. I'm not sure I fully agree. I think it just has a lot to... At the end of the day, it has a lot to do with parenting. It has a lot to do with parenting. And it does tie into culture. But I think mainly it's down to parenting. It doesn't matter whether you're white, black, Asian, Jamaican, um, African. If, if you have good parents, you're unlikely to go out there and want to stab someone. It's parenting, it's parenting. I agree, yeah. we've just said the it's same thing. Public health but you also, no, but you also have to, you have to penalize uh, uh, criminality in a very severe way. There is no reason why someone should be able to get carry a knife yeah, on the street and then get, get a slap on prison? the wrist. What happens when they, they, they come out the other side and they find themselves homeless and they don't have any money? Then what next, do they do? Next they time you're not going to carry around a knife, then are you? No, but you are going to commit another crime. I mean, well, why are you in the US, that? you can get literally shot or asphyxiated just for failing to stop that, the police cars. Well, there's no, still never a knife crime here. You can. You know what worries me about the knife crime? It's getting worse here, and they're acting with more impunity, and more kids are carrying knives. So at some point, we've got as a society. Yes, we can lecture the Americans about their gun violence, and I've done that many times. And it's not I think gun it's, violence, it's police violence. I think violence. it's nuts they don't do more. I also think it's nuts we don't do more about knife violence here. I mean, look, the Americans literally give police forces so much money. They give them, like, assault rifles, these massive weapons, you know, weapons that are used in literal mm. states of war, and yet that isn't... So solving the problem. Yeah, because you can't but they're not, solve they're the not problem. All right, well, look, let's, to kill people. All right, let's move on to another act of uncontrollable violence. So, uh, Bambi is... <laughs> that was a very, very interesting conversation. I really hope Esther has a pissed off <laughs> Caribbean, pe Caribbean people. And everyone knows, if you're African, I'm sure there are a few Africans who watch my videos. You guys know, you, you grew up with African parents. You couldn't really get up to mischief because your bloody mummy and your bloody daddy were stopping you. Really, when you break it down, is strictly, strictly, if you break it down, it's, it's, it's down to the parents. It's down to the parents because, like I said, I knew bloody African kids who had a mother and a father. They still ended up in jail. They still ended up um, becoming a criminal, doing violent things. I'm not saying that they're still criminal, but they went through that period of doing whatever they wanted. So it's deeper than just culture, bro. I'm telling you, it's deeper than culture. You've got to have strict parents. Now, I'm not saying that just having strict parents is going to solve, solve the problem, but it will help prevent the problem going forward, you know? Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you later.